as a full-time van builder, I've been hearing from a lot of people lately um, about the EcoFlow power system and others like the Blue Eddy, Jackery, uh, Gold Zero. A lot of companies are now making um, that type of system. In fact, Battleborn just announced this week that they're going to be producing an all-in-one system. Um, well, a lot of people comment to me on YouTube that um, you know these systems with components with the Victron, Renogy, Xantrex, that those systems are just way too complicated. It's just way easier to drop in an EcoFlow system uh, or one like it. So I thought it might be a good idea to do a video about this and to talk about the differences and the pros and cons and whether going with an all-in-one system versus a component system is the best option for you. So if you're building your own van or camper or you're doing an upgrade on an RV electrical system, this video is for you. And be sure you stay till the end of the video because I'll share with you which type of system gives you the most bang for your buck, the all-in-one system or the component system. And the answer might surprise you. So let's get into the video. Now the EcoFlow is a really beautifully designed system and um, on the surface seems like a really good option for DIYers. Um, so let's look, look at some of the specs. So probably the most popular EcoFlow system for vans, campers, and smaller RVs would be their five kilowatt hour independence kit. So we're gonna be comparing that to a full Victron kit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the, the Victron components that we use in our systems, and we're gonna use um, four Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries for comparison, because that's kind of the closest comparison. Now you could go with less expensive batteries and save some money, and we'll talk about some of that later. Uh, but those are the two main systems we're gonna compare. And we're gonna keep everything at 12 volts just to make it really easy to compare. The EcoFlow is a 48 volt system, but then it converts that down to 12 volts volts for most of the things you're going to be using. Uh, the Victron system can run in 12, 24, 48 volt. And in the end, I'll kind of talk about some of the pros and cons of that as well. But just for ease of comparison, we're going to keep this all at 12 volts. Now, one of the things about EcoFlow um, that could be kind of a negative is that it's a closed system. Um, it's sort of if you look, think of it as Apple computer, where there's a closed system where they really, all of their cables and cords and software are proprietary to the Apple system. The Victron or any component system would be a little bit more like a PC type computer where um, it's a little bit more open, open source. And so other developers and manufacturers can make things that fit well with it. So kind of up front to just to get some math out of the way and understood um, because EcoFlow states all of their numbers in watt hours and most component systems are talking more in amp hours. So I just want to kind of explain that. To get watt hours, you would just multiply the volts by the amps. And so most, even though these systems are considered 12 volt systems, they're typically running at anywhere from about 13 to 14.4 volts. On average, I see them running typically around 13.6 to 13.8, and as the batteries de deplete, they go down. So we're just gonna use an average of 13 and a half volts just to make the math easy, okay? So to get the watt hours of the Victron Battleborn system, we'd take the 400 amp hours, multiply it by the 13 and a half volts, and we would get 5,400 watt hours. Okay, now the EcoFlow, they state that as a 5,120 watt hour system. So it's pretty comparable. So just to work the EcoFlow numbers in reverse, you would take the 5,120 watt hours divided by the 13 and a half volts, which gives you about 380 amp hours. Okay, so we're comparing a 380 amp hour Eco EcoFlow system to a 400 amp hour um, Battleborn slash Victron system. Now there's lots of com combinations you could do with the Victron system, which is one of the things that makes it kind of nice. You could do 200, 300 amp hours. You could use um, the, the um, Battleborn 270 amp hour batteries. You could use a lower cost battery like SOK or Lion Energy, all good batteries. Um, and I'm gonna give you kind of some cost breakdowns in the end that kind of show you the differences. Um, but there are a lot of options for batteries, but I'm just going to use the Battleborn. That's what we typically use. 
And um, for sake of comparison, I think it's good we're comparing a 380 amp hour system to a 400 amp hour system. Or in watt hours, it would be 5,400 watt hours for the Battleborn Victron system and 5,120 for the EcoFlow system. Now, as far as the capacities for the AC and DC, that's really important. Really kind of the core of these systems is what will they produce um, in both AC and DC power. So the EcoFlow system is rated at 2,200 continuous watts. The Victron uh, MultiPlus inverter charger that we'll be using here is rated at 3,000 watts. So the Victron system has a little bit of an edge in the watts. And that can be important because if you're running multiple high usage AC devices, for example, the things that use a lot of AC in a van or RV are water heater, anything really that produces heat, water heater, um, a coffee maker, an induction cooktop, a microwave, all of those are typically using anywhere from 15 to 1800 watts. So if you were to run two of those at a time, you would exceed the capacity of the um, EcoFlow system. So really you'd only be able to run one um, high, high output device at a time. With the Victron, because of the 3000 watts plus a little bit of extra cushion there, if you need it, you're able to run a couple of those types of devices at the same time. So again, there the edge goes to Victron. So on the DC side, the EcoFlow system is rated at 70 amps, um, 12 volt. And so that equates to about a thousand watts, just a little bit under a thousand watts. That would be the DC capacity. So on the Victron side, uh, that system would be rated at about 400 amps. And really that's just based on the batteries and the, the capacity they have um, to provide amps. It's not really limited by the, the Victron and different batteries will have different um, capacities, but most of them are in the 400, um, 400 amp range. And so 70 amps compared to 400 amps is quite a difference. And so for that system, the Victron with the Battleborn batteries, you'd be over 5,000 watts. So about five times the wattage um, for, from the Victron than you have for the EcoFlow. Now, what does that mean in real life? So the things that are running on DC, you know, is in, in your vans or RV, most of the things in there are running on DC. Things like your refrigerator, your water pump, your lights, um, typically your heat. Um, things like that are running off of DC. And so it's important to have the capacity. Now in most vans, we're using 12 volt air conditioners. Most of those 12 volt air conditioners are pulling anywhere from 50 to 100 amps um, when they're running at full speed. So even if you were running a 50 or 60 amp air conditioner, you wouldn't have enough capacity left over on the DC side to run your other devices, your lights, your maybe your, fan, your roof fan or your refrigerator, your water pump. So I get that question a lot on YouTube is, can I run one of these 12 volt air conditioners with an EcoFlow or similar all-in-one unit? And the answer is probably no. I mean, you could push it and not run anything else, but really um, for the sake of um, having a little bit of extra capacity, which I always like to have, you really need to have a bigger system. So you can add an extra battery unit to the EcoFlow, which gives you a little bit more capacity, but it still doesn't increase the number of um, amps that, that the, on the DC side that it puts out. Another option is that you can get a 48 volt air conditioner like the Nomadic X2 or X3 and then wire that directly into the um, 48 volt bus on the EcoFlow, wire it directly in, and then you are able to run that air conditioner. But that's something that if you're a DIYer and you're intimidated by a Victron system, that might be a bridge too far to have to run the 48 volt directly into the unit. Um, like I said, it does require pro proprietary connections. So you're gonna have to get those. So it's a little bit more technical but it is doable to run a 48 volt battery off of the EcoFlow system. Hey, we wanted to jump in really quick and share something with you that Lisa and I are passionate about. We're both foodies and we love cooking and creating in the kitchen, whether we're at home or cooking in a tiny van kitchen. And one of our favorite hacks is using Thrive freeze-dried foods. Why freeze-dried? Because it's lightweight, requires no refrigerator, van life bonus, and lasts for up to 25 years. 
And because it's washed, peeled, and chopped before it's freeze-dried, all we do is scoop it out of the can and throw it into our dish. It's picked at the peak of freshness and then freeze-dried, removing the water, but leaving all the nutrients and flavor. With fruits, veggies, meats, and dairy products, Thrive's got you covered. They even have complete meals. Just add water and your meal is ready in about 10 minutes, which is great when you want a quick one pot meal after a long day on the road. Whether you want healthy ingredients for quick and easy meals, shelf stable meals for when you are on the road, or you want to be more prepared in case of emergencies, Thrive could be your answer. Check out the link below for more info. And now back to the video. So let's talk about alternator charging. That's something that is really important for a van, camper, RV, and probably the main source of charging for most people. You know, you're gonna have your solar, which is gonna give you some, you're gonna have the ability to plug into shore power. But for us and most of our, our clients, the alternator charging is the number way that they're charging their system on a daily basis. So let's talk about the Victron first. So there's the Victron Orion unit, and typically they have a unit that puts out 30 amps. They just came out one that puts out 50 amps called the Orion XS50, and it is a DC charger, puts out 50 amps. On the EcoFlow, they have a 60 amp input into the EcoFlow system, so you can tap into your alternator and get 60 amps. So a little bit more for the EcoFlow. But I'm gonna talk about some capabilities that still might make the Victron system a little bit better. With both systems, you're gonna to have to run the wires from your vehicle's alternator or battery somewhere up near the front of the vehicle and run it back to the back where your power system is and tie into that. And so as far as the connecting to your vehicle, Really, there's no benefit or ease in the EcoFlow um, system. It's just as technical as doing the Victron system. And then running the wires back is the same. And then connecting it on the EcoFlow side, they have the proprietary wire that you just plug in. But on the Victron, you're just plugging the wires into the Orion unit. And so really, there is I don't see any benefit in the um, DIY friendly side of the EcoFlow as far as the alternator charging goes. Now the drawbacks are that it's really not expandable. With a Victron or other component type system, there's a lot of different options. You can add a secondary alternator. Um, and with a secondary alternator, you can do a 12 volt, 24, 48 volt. You could get up to two or 300 amps of charging out of a secondary alternator. Um, you can't do that with the um, EcoFlow. Now, I don't typically recommend adding a secondary alternator, but what you can do is add a second Orion unit and uh, get, instead of 50 amps, get 100 amps, which is a pretty nice uh, feature to be able to get 100 amps. So in that case, you can get a little bit more out of the um, Victron system than you can out of the EcoFlow. And you really, they typically say that you shouldn't exceed more than 50% of your alternator's capacity. Most alternators put out anywhere from 200 to 250 amps. And so you really, I don't like to push it any more than about 100 amps out of the factory alternator. Um, but you can get up to closer to that, you know, 100 or so amps using the Victron system. And then if you go to a secondary alternator, you can push it a lot higher. So definitely on the alternator charging side, I give the edge to Victron. So now let's talk about solar. Solar is another great way to charge the system on your um, van, RV, camper, whatever it is. Um, but it's really limited by the size of the solar array that you can fit on the roof. If you've got a big RV, you can fit a lot of solar. But if you've got a shorter van, a, a Sprinter 144 or a smaller um, Dodge Ram, you're probably only gonna be able to fit four to 600 watts of solar on your roof. And if you've got a longer van, you might be able to push it maybe to six or 800. But in most vans, if you, especially if you have an air conditioner or a fan, you're more in the 300 to 400 watt range. And so either of these systems, EcoFlow or the Victron system can accommodate that size of um, solar array. So really, I would say there it's a tie on both of those because you're gonna be able to get as much solar as you can fit, you're gonna be able to push into these um, to charge your, your system. 
As far as the third way to charge would be shore power, and really both of these are very similar. They both can accept 30 amp shore power charging. You again have to put a shore power outlet somewhere on the outside of the van um, to be able to plug into. Um, you can do the 30, 30 amp that they have at um, RV parks or campgrounds, or you can use an adapter and use just a regular household 15 or 20 amp core um, outlet. And so again, in that case, I would say both of these are very similar. The EcoFlow Independence 5,000 kilowatt hour kit retails for $86.99. The, the street price right now on it is about $7,500. And the nice thing about the, this kit is it can, includes pretty much all the wires and connectors that you're going to need to hook it up to um, your alternator, um, your solar panels, and your shore power connection. You will need to purchase the shore power inlet. You'll need to purchase the solar panels, but it includes pretty much everything else, which is nice. Now with the Victron slash Battleborn system, you're gonna choose the components that make the most sense for you. And the nice thing is that you can adapt these and choose what works best for you. For the system that we're comparing here, we're looking at four 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries. We're using the Multiplus 12 3120 inverter charger, the 130 smart solar charger, the Orion XS 50 amp DC to DC charger, the Lynx distributor, a BMV 712 for monitoring the system, and then the Multiplus switch to turn on and off your inverter charger. Now this kit obviously doesn't include all the wiring and, and connectors and fuses and um, circuit breakers that you're going to need. So we th throw in about $300 for all of this stuff. Gives you a total of about $6,000 for this system. So you're already saving about $1,500 with the Battleborn Victron system compared to the EcoFlow. There are a lot of great options for batteries. Some of my favorites are the SOK batteries. Um, we've used those in systems. Um, we've also used the Lion Energy. Those are good batteries and those are going to be less money probably. With Lion you're looking at seven or eight hundred dollars for a hundred amp hour battery. There are a couple of upgrades that we usually um, do on our Victron systems. We use the Serbo GX and the touchscreen. Um, when you do that you don't need to have the BMB 712 or the switch. So it eliminates those, but it adds some cost, adds about $400 to your system. Nice thing about the Serbo is that with that, you're able to monitor uh, your tank levels, your gray water, fresh water, and you're also able to monitor um, temperature, like you can temp monitor inside the battery compartment. You could even monitor inside the van if you had pets. Um, inside a refrigerator, so there's lots of, lots of options for that. So really for most people, you're looking at about $5,500 to $6,500 um, for a system. If you bought all of the Battleborn and um, some of the less expensive batteries, you could add more batteries for a little bit more money, easy to expand that way. Um, but really it comes down to that you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck. So going with the Victron system, you're probably going to save about $1,500 to $2,000, maybe more if you go with some less expensive batteries. And with that extra money that you save, you could hire someone to install the system and probably still come under what the cost of the EcoFlow system would be. But what I recommend is just learn to do it yourself. It's really not that hard. A great resource that we've used is Explorist. Um, they're on YouTube, Explorist. Um, and then they also have a website, explorist.life, L-I-F-E. And they have wiring diagrams, um, tons of tutorials on YouTube, anything from just how to strip wires, how to crimp on connections, to how to set up an entire system. And um, they're a great resource. So I highly recommend it. And that's really the route that I recommend DIYers go over something like an EcoFlow or an all-in-one system. Um, now, we're not sponsored by Explorist, uh, but we are certified installers with Explorist. So you're, if you're interested in having someone um, install your, your Victron system or design an entire system for you, um, then let us know, we can do that for you. Now, one of the limitations with the EcoFlow system is the ability to expand. Um, because all of the components, your solar charging, your alternator charging, your inverter are all built into one box, you cannot add things or go to a higher capacity. It's all in one. 
Um, and, and then also batteries. It comes with the battery unit as part of that power system. Um, you can add an, an extra one, another like 5,000 kilowatt hours, but that is running right now about $4,600. And so quite expensive to add another battery. So that would bring you up to the equivalent of about 720 amp hours, which is great, that's a lot, but you could do a lot more for a lot less with other types of batteries. For example, you could add additional Battleborn batteries, um, the 100 amp hour batteries, uh, those are about $900 each. And so it works out to about $9 per amp hour. Whereas with the EcoFlow, that $4,600 for the 380 amp hour um, unit, works out to about $12 per amp hour. Now, if you went with a less expensive battery like Lion or SOK, for example, the SOK 280 amp hour batteries are about 11 or $1,200, which works out to like $4 per amp hour. So there are much less expensive options when it comes to batteries than the ones that come with the EcoFlow systems. And you really can't use any other batteries. You have to use theirs. So you're very, lim very limited that way. Now, another problem with the EcoFlow system is that all of the connections are proprietary. So you basically have to use their cables. I've read reviews where people said that some of the cables were too short for their application and there's no real way to e extend those wires. And so um, if that's the case, that can you can run into problems that way. Um, if you have a bad cable just to get a replacement, I've heard um, of someone who needed a new cable and waited three weeks for the cable, couldn't use the system during that entire time they were waiting, reached out to the company because they still hadn't received it. And um, they, after three weeks, and the company had a real hard time getting a hold of the company when they finally did, they couldn't even give them a, a clear time when they would receive the cable. And um, I talked to them recently and they still hadn't received the cable. So that can be a big problem um, it, uh, in addition, if one component of your system goes out with the EcoFlow system, for example, if your solar charge controller portion of that goes out, the entire system could be gone. Or if you need to get it replaced, you may have to send the entire power unit back and get a new one. And while you're waiting, you have no system at all. Where with a component system like Victron, your solar charge controller goes out, you can still use your, your alternator charging, you can still plug into shore power, and in a day or two, you can get a new solar charge con controller unit and swap it out in like 15 minutes. So I think for that ability to interchange parts, replace parts, expand, it's well worth spending the extra effort in, in learning or, or paying someone to install um, a Victron or component type system. I've heard horror stories about the EcoFlow um, customer service. And if you go on and read, read their reviews, they're really not very good. So um, that's something to consider when you're spending that kind of money to get such poor customer support and possibly having to wait, wait and wait to get parts or help with the system. That can be a big, big turnoff. Now with Victron, um, depending on who you purchase your Victron components through, like we use Battleborn for all of our components and also Explorist, they'll really work with you and do whatever it takes to get your system working. If you were to have us install your system or some other um, qualified builder, especially somebody that's Explorist um, certified, we're gonna stand behind our work. And if something goes wrong, you can bring it back to us and we're gonna help you get it back up and running. So that's another big benefit to the Victron component type system. Now, if you're a DIY builder, you probably got tons of questions, things like how big a system do I need? What, which component should I buy? How do all those components work together? Should I go with a 12 volt or 24 or even a 48 volt system? Now, if you have those types of questions, we've got a video that you might wanna check out. We've also got tons of videos on our channel about van building, van life, van tours. So just tap or click the screen to see those. So please consider subscribing to our channel and go ahead and smash that like button. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Jeff with Thrive Vans, thrive on, see ya.